Every year in the United States, 31,000 women and men will develop a cancer related to the human papillomavirus, or HPV. HPV infection will often resolve on its own, but in some cases it persists and will lead to cancers. Many of these cancers are preventable with the HPV vaccine. So HPV, or human papillomavirus, is really a group of about 150 different types of, of uh, subtypes of that virus. And they're all over the world. They're all over our skin, and some cause problems and some don't. HPV is really uh, almost part of being human to get exposed to it. Uh, virtually all of us uh, are exposed at some point. Some have this uh, likelihood of landing on your skin and causing warts. Some of them have a likelihood of landing on your mucosal sur or surfaces, like in your mouth or in your genitals, and they can cause warts there. And then there's about 40 of them that we consider high risk type, and those are more likely to cause cancers. HPV can cause cancers of the genitalia and also of the head and neck. In women, we most often think of cervical cancer, but it can actually cause cancers of the vulva, vagina, and in both men and women, it can cause the head and neck cancers in the oropharynx, which is the back of your nose and throat and includes the base of the tongue. A woman diagnosed with an HPV cancer, cervical cancer is the most common, with almost 12,000 women diagnosed annually in the United States. Of the men in the United States diagnosed with an HPV cancer, oral pharyngeal cancer is the most common. In general, HPV is thought to be responsible for more than 90% of anal and cervical cancers, about 70% of vaginal and vulvar cancers, and more than 60% of penile cancers. We have a safe and effective vaccine that can prevent this potentially deadly disease that was first recommended in 2006 in the United States. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend that children receive the vaccine between the ages of 11 and 12 before they can be exposed to HPV. Depending on the age of your patient, either two or three doses of the vaccine are required. You should use every opportunity to effectively recommend and administer all of the adolescent vaccines to parents of your preteen and teen patients. Avoid missed opportunities to administer the HPV vaccine recommend the HPV vaccine the same way and on the same day that you recommend other adolescent vaccines. Educate parents about the diseases that can be prevented by adolescent vaccines and talk about HPV vaccination in terms of cancer prevention. It is really important at the adolescent or 11 to 12 year old visit, the pediatricians offer three vaccines, the HPV vaccine, the meningitis vaccine, and the Tdap vaccine, all in a group, and we call it the bundle of the adolescent vaccines. And it's been shown that when you walk in and you tell parents it's time to receive three vaccines, um, they are much more likely to accept all three at once. And what we learned is, is that it's really important not to put HPV in a special chair. Uh, don't put it off to the side. Don't say, hey, your child's due for two mandatory vaccines today, and then there's this other one we'd like to talk about. Because if you think about it, mandatory is a government issue, not a healthcare issue. And every professional society recommends the HPV vaccine. And in fact, if you look at deaths in Texas, deaths in the United States related to, to vaccine preventable illnesses, there are far more deaths related to HPV than there are to pertussis and vaccine preventable meningitis. Knowing this alone, means that there should not be any separation. I would tell parents that this vaccine is very safe. It's been around over 10 years, which is longer than the iPhone. So when people think it's new, it's really not new at all. About 100 million doses of the HPV vaccine have been given, and it's a very safe vaccine. So the risks are just really minimal, and the benefits are huge for receiving this cancer-preventing vaccine. I highly recommend not saying, do you want this? That is not the right question. We are recommending this vaccine. Do you have any questions is the right question. As a cancer physician, we have amazing armamentarium to treat cancers, but it's incredibly um, expensive. It's incredibly uh, difficult for patients to undergo these various treatments. And when we have a cancer, such as HPV-related cancers, that gives us an opportunity to completely prevent it um, it's why I feel so passionate about trying to uh, get the message out about vaccination.
All my life I have heard that we needed a cure for cancer. Now we have a way of preventing about 5% of all cancers. So why wouldn't we do that? As a mother, I feel that it's my responsibility to my children as a pediatrician, a responsibility to all my patients to make sure that they will never get this form of cancer. Parents trust your opinion more than anyone else's when it comes to immunizations. And a strong provider recommendation can help raise the rate of HPV vaccinations. Unfortunately, there's not a lot that we can do about many cancers. But when it comes to HPV-related cancers, there's a vaccine that can help prevent many of them. Talk to your patients and their families today about the benefits of the HPV vaccine, and let's stop the rise of HPV-related cancers.